looking forward to the gig today. Uh, the Hound Dogs are doing one set, I believe, and then Jim's going to come on for the second half. The Hound Dogs, great bunch of lads. They've come and played at the club a few times now. I'm Robert, guitarist, guitar player. <laughs> I'm David, the drummer. And I'm Ian, the bass player. We've been playing together now for about 20 years. I was nine years old when we did our first gig. I started off with the T-Chest bass, that was my first instrument, uh, which is a wooden box with a string and a broom handle. Mum's broom uh, handle. Mum's broom handle, yeah, uh, which I got told off about. But anyway, <laughs> listening to the early Sun recordings, so it was Bill Black on Doghouse bass, which was uh, Elvis's first bass player. Um, and that kind of got me interested in the double bass. And then of course we, we saw the Stray Cats and I saw Lee Rocker play in the way. And uh, it kind of, yeah, it kind of went from there. Robert started first strumming guitar. Um, Dad showed him the first three chords and um, so that instrument was gone. Ian then started <laughs> messing around on the bass and whatever. And of course, me being the youngest, I was told you're doing the drums. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, someone lent me a single snare drum. Um, so Ray Slim Jim Phantom standing there, just hitting the snare, you know, which was ideal right up my street. So, yeah, that's how um, I got into it really. So uh, forced into it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Moore, Elvis's guitar player, was the guy that really started it for me. And then somebody lent us the video of the Stray Cats, which is kind of when we all kind of went, wow. And I saw Brian Tetzer play and I went, that's, that's what I want to do. From there, I believe I play my own style now. You know, I, I, you can hear all the influences. It doesn't just stop at rockabilly for us guys. We're no. into everything, you know, so. And hopefully that comes out in the way we play rockabilly. So there's probably quite a lot of purists that go, man, I hate these guys because they don't play it as it was, but we play it the way we want to play it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what it's about. You've Which got to is make what it's about. Own, You've got to you make know. it your own, you know. Yeah. Both mum and dad, and they're the best mm. parents ever. Because if it wasn't for them, obviously, we wouldn't be able to do what we do because Absolutely. they are so, supportive. I mean, supportive of everything we do. I mean, when we first started, they did everything they could to mm. get us what we needed. Mum used to go into the bedroom and watch a little black and white television because we chucked her out the living room because we wanted to practice in the living room and she still does that today and she cooks for us all and up until literally a couple of years ago she used to drive us to every gig. She did. And whether it was down to Cornwall, Scotland, up to Scotland, or France, wherever it mm. was. She drove it, yeah, wherever. I mean she would just drive us anywhere and everywhere. We're here today playing with one of our heroes, Slim Jim Phantom from Stray Cats, which is really kind of what, when we saw a video of them, when we went, that's what we want to do. The Stray Cats have been a big part of my life since in music, uh, you know, I just, I still don't get bored of listening to them, you know, it's got just that unique sound, you can tell the Stray Cat straight away. Gentlemen, Mr. Slim Jim Phantom, let's hear the Slim Jim, come on! Thank you very much, hand down. David, the drummer from the Hound Dogs, gave me Slim Jim's email so we could communicate about arranging everything. I'll just put it in there, you know, where are you staying? If you want to, you can come and stay at my house. I've got spare rooms. Uh, and I can believe it. He said, yeah, that sounds cool. You know, this afternoon I cooked him dinner. Uh, you know, it's just like, I've got a stray cat in my house. You know, I'm cooking him dinner and we're going to have breakfast tomorrow. And it's just like, you know, I really couldn't believe it. I got Cat, 
class and I got cast out. We've had a few accidents in the past, haven't we? Yeah, you know, with all yeah. our antics that we get up to. Ian's got a trick where he stands on the double base and uh, yeah. um, okay. within the first few years, wasn't it, you're still getting used to the balance and uh, you fell off and fell on somebody in the audience. Yeah, so and, yeah. audience member. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it, it didn't go well. No. <laughs> no. no. We got asked to play for someone's wedding, which was great, and we did it, blah, blah, blah. And we kind of have this trick where David throws the cymbal out while it's on fire, and it lands on the floor, and it normally goes out. It's supposed to go out. It's supposed to go out. <laughs> this particular time it didn't, and the bride was just there. Yeah, set fire to it. Set fire to the dress. And uh, yeah, she, she seemed to think it was brilliant at the time. Uh, and then a few days later, we got a phone call, sort of with quite a serious moan about it. <laughs> and we had to give her some money back. I sent a bunch of flowers. And sent her a bunch of flowers. Yeah. And then she was sweet about she it. She saw you know. the funny side eventually, <laughs> yeah. luckily. After we were sued, it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>